Happy Saturday, everyone. I just wanted to give you a bit of feedback on your readability discussion board posts, which I thought were marvelous and very professional. I hope you are all taking the time to read every post or at least scan every post because these are important learning opportunities for you and not only about readability, but, but about the way your colleagues are able to synthesize key ideas from professional literature, like our textbooks, and use them to support their own instructional procedures and strategies. I thought so many of you had key ideas to share about readability and your students. As many of you pointed out, it goes far beyond that quantitative formula where we look at number of syllables in a sentence, number of words in a, um, in a 100 in a sentence, let me let me rephrase that a minute here. If, if we look at a hundred word passage, the number of syllables in that 100 word passage as opposed to the number of sentences. So those are quantitative measures, but we certainly, and this certainly doesn't take into account those key qualitative components, such as is a particular student really interested in this book and, or, and this is one that's near and dear to my heart, how well did you motivate those students to read the material? And I think those are key components. Other components are the layout of the book. For example, we may have some students who are more likely to become engaged and involved in reading a graphic novel than if those same words were just put on a page with no illustrations. I know several students like that. My grandson is definitely one of them. So all of those ideas go into readability and we can't just rely on a quantitative formula, as so many of you note. Now, let's look ahead. Next week, you're doing the disciplinary discourse assignment, and I do have a video up from last week about it because I try and post assignments two weeks ahead in case any of you have a crunch in your own schedules and need to work ahead a bit. So, Right now, I'm going to talk about the BDA framework analysis, which is due, let me see, let me check, oh, October 6th. That's the day I'm going to get my new Westie puppy. So, um, BDA refers to before, during, and after strategies. Now, these are important strategies, despite what some at ILA, International Literacy Association, might say about the before reading strategies. We do know these are important, and in looking ahead to the following week, October 13th, you will be very concerned about these strategies, particularly on activating background knowledge, as you look at the PSYOP strategies for our English learners. So, when you think about the BDA analysis, there are so many wonderful strategies really outlined in the chapter from our Subjects Matter book. And in fact, I wanna point out to you that in chapter five, it is very specifically discussed on page 88, before, during, and after ideas, and then each one of the strategies discussed in this chapter really highlights whether it's a before reading, a during reading, or an after reading strategy. So take a look at these and be very cognizant of them. 
These are going to become important for the second half of the class as you write your own rewrite of this case study unit as your curriculum project. So the more thinking you do about this now and how you might edit your unit and add to your unit, the less you will have to do for that curriculum project. So it's always nice to do more than one thing at once, isn't it? And then in the um, strategies that workbook, I just want to note that I had only asked you for um, this particular um, unit to read chapters, let's see, four and six. But chapter seven, if you're still confused or you want more material or other things to think about, you can read ahead to chapter seven, which will be important for the following week. And this will help you think about more before, during, and after reading strategies. You don't have to read that if you feel like you've got it. Chapter seven is really one that I chose to focus on the ELL strategies. But if you'd like to read it, it will certainly support your learning this week. So again, if you have any questions or concerns, please call, text, or email. Um, I will be moving this week, yay! And so I won't have easy access to internet um, Tuesday through Friday morning, but my phone will be on and I will be checking email. And if you have questions, I will do my very best to answer them but I may say, hmm, let's talk on the phone because I won't be able to sit in front of my computer on those days. So until next week, I will see you then. Have a great week and a marvelous weekend. Oh, and go Packers.